Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another review of Real Housewives of Potomac Season 8, Episode 12. And this episode is called Blazed and Confused. Um, I will say this. I this was a little bit more of an enjoyable episode. It actually cracked me up a couple times. There was a lot of funny moments. But one thing's for sure, two things are certain. I want Giselle off the show. I'm I'm done with her. I'm very much done with her. She is very much, and I know I've been her. I don't know who said it first, who coined it first, but multiple people have been saying it, including me. She's Elisa Renna of this show. She needs she needs to take a pause. She just does. It is what it is. Anyway, let's get into the episode though. So this episode starts with Giselle and Ashley meeting up to get their um, fabrics together for their clothing line together, which is still freaking laughable because <laughs> if you see what they're even wearing to go and pick out these fabrics, child, the fashions are not fashioning. But anyway, um, Robin and Mia do end up meeting them as well. So basically the team that plots on what, how the season's got, season going to go for the following season and whatnot, that crew, they're all meeting up together. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. Um, <laughs> only thing that was, was it, that was missing was Sharice. You might as well have Sharice there and you would have had the, the crew. But anyway, they're talking about the sweat um, and better ways of building their brand so that at least it can help with the absorption of the sweaty areas in the lower region. Um, which, by the way, I will say this. I'll be fully transparent. I... And not afraid to eat my words when it comes to a clothing brand because it is athleisure. If they do figure out or have a way where they are good for absorbing that, because that has always been my complaint when it comes to running gear or workout gear is <laughs> I'm part of a similar club as Ashley is where things in the region, you know, where babies come from is sweats. I, I, yeah, and then also, like, even swamp butt, like, you know, swamp that. If they can figure out a way to make that do what it do and make it where it's a little bit more, like, friendly fabric that's friendly, friendly to that, I would eat my words, and I actually would be interested in buying the product. But it also does have to look cute. <laughs> I will say this. Because Giselle was talking about some rhinestones on this mess up so before, and I'm just like, child, no. I don't want to look like a Disney character working out. I don't. But anyway, so, um, but they do end up recapping the event. Um, the invite fiasco with, in reg regards to Karen. Because we know that Karen sent the original invite, and then she sent a second invite that invited all the group at the last minute. So Mia still feels a way about it. Robin, she she's annoyed by it, but she don't really care for real. And but anyway, Mia's still making a thing about it. And Ashley being the bone carrier she is, because she's the only one that went to the event, she lets Mia know about how Karen felt about it. She thinks that Karen thought that Mia's reaction was over the top. She was doing a little much. And um I don't think so. I'm sorry. I think Mia was actually correct in her reaction. But anyway. But you know what? No. I take that back. Because Mia and Karen were not in the best of place. They've been trying to work on getting a better place. So yeah, Karen might be right on this one. I'm sorry. I take it back. Karen might be right on this one. But anyway, we find out though that um, Wendy did end up inviting everyone to Eddie's event that's coming up, the Happy Eddie event. But she um, includes, she has Ineka as Ashley's friend. She doesn't even address her by her name. <laughs> Which, Wendy, I'm going to have some words with you later on this episode too, because as much as I want to be on your side, girl, you are dragging this a little bit, and I need that to stop. But anyway. So, but, but Wendy does stay in professional. She is going to invite everyone. She doesn't, she doesn't have the issues that Karen had. So she's like, I just invited everyone. So it is what it is. And then Giselle states that she's going because the others are going. And this is, 
And this is one of the many reasons why this is not of like, oh, I can't stand Giselle, but she brings so much to the show. She brings nothing to this show. She can go. She only brings drama, chaos, but it's like unnecessary chaos, like overly produced chaos and hate. So, yeah, she can go. Anyway, annoying that she's, she's going to go because everyone's going. No, I need you to stand on business. If you're going to ice out, ice yourself out when it comes to everything that they're involved in. How about you leave this show? I know what you're trying to do, but I think you should leave the show. It is what it is. But anyway, um, I did not get any in invite. So Neca's husband did not get an invite. But that makes sense because he actually did try to put hands on Eddie. So no, you're not going to get invited. And um, But that's what Mia saw in the group chat. Because Mia was the one who was kind of reporting who was getting invited and who wasn't invited because of the group chat that they had. But that pretty much does conclude the scene. I ain't gonna lie, I feel like this was a, a produced scene so that they could just talk about this. Because why are you going to Michael's to... I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I, I kind of don't believe this um, clothing line thing. I need to look it up and see if it's actually real. But I, I, part, part of me doesn't believe it. Anyway, next scene. So next, we see that Naneka is zooming in with her business partner about her sparkling wine collection that she's making and she's creating. Um... So we, she's an attorney, right? But she also on the side is a businesswoman, apparently. Um, I kind of see, and this is me, maybe me being nitpicky and me getting on producers a little bit. These are things that we would, it would make sense to find this out episode one or two instead of episode 12. It's just the sequences of us getting to know Naneka because she's new. You basically made it where we already don't have a good taste about her. And now we're getting to know. It's like we're. <laughs> Child, in the words of, in the words of um, Wendy, wrong order. <laughs> even us getting, even how, they, they, they did Naneka wrong. I ain't gonna hold you. Like, we really should have got to know Naneka and everything she got going on first. And then the mess instead of the other way around. Because just makes it hard for me to care as much or even be wanting to get invested because she already, you know, was put 20 on 10 when it comes to a situation. But anyway, so. And she also mentioned again about the drinking champagne while taking pre meal vitamins, which is still weird. Um, and then uh, Lalebi, um shows up. So the cousin, the infamous cousin that started all this mess, she shows up. And um, also another one, the NECA's friend shows up as well. And the NECA mentions in her confessional, her house is not still not all the way together, but it's definitely looked better than it did on the first episode. Um, and she has them there to help her unpack. And then she mentions the unpacking party to them and what that's going to be. And then she mentioned that she is hoping that they're move her and Wendy are moving forward because Wendy invited her to the event. So she's seen that as an olive branch, which honestly, if I'm getting invited to an event, I would see that as an olive branch as well. And that's kind of the other reason why I'm like, Wendy, I might have to get on you on this episode because the signals are of the mixed variety. I'm going to need you to use your words and communicate. Anyway, next thing. Okay, so we have um, Candace and Chris, and they're at their house in their bed. And Candace is working on her lines um, for, because for those who don't know, Candace, besides being a musician, she also films a scripted television show called Hush on the All Black Network. Uh, so your girl's booked and busy. And that's why the time and her not spending a lot of time with Chris is kind of difficult for her. Which, by the way, I know that was mentioned in one episode, but I feel like that hasn't been revisited yet. And maybe it will get later on revisit, but based off the number of episodes right now, we're kind of getting close. So hopefully we get some answers on that. But anyway, so she uh, mentioned, so as a result of her having to film the show, she's not going to be able to really stay at the event, the Happy Eddie event. Um, really that long at all like yeah 
And so she does ask Chris about getting her, make sure she gets some supplies because she's going to need it to replace her emergency stash. And then also she asked Chris how he feels about going, seeing that Ashley and Giselle are going to be there. And basically he doesn't care. He hasn't seen either of them since the reunion and just is what it is. And I don't, I don't blame him. Cause really I don't, I think he said what he said and he's done with it. Cause he kind of read both of them for filth. And yeah, cause neither of those girls can read. So there is, there's that. Okay. So then next Wendy, Eddie are reviewing the event space prior to the event starting. We find out that he is, um, in their business, they're planning on having three different types of canvases that they're going to do. So they're going to have like an Energize Eddy, a Mellow Eddy, and then they're going to have something in between like a hybrid, which has 33% um, THC Zen Win. <laughs> so I love that they're using um, the phrases that came up that they came up with on the show as the brand, they, pardon me, the brand that they're using for um, their canvas line. So that's, that's, that's funny. Anyway, so they're going to have an area where they get to practice rolling joints, but they find out they're going to be using spices versus the actual product. And Wendy is like so visibly disappointed. She was like, I thought we were going to have this event. I was going to be high. And it turns out that that ain't it. That's not what's happening. And anyway, but shortly after that, Candace and Chris arrive. Um, Candace pretty much leaves like right away, though. She's like, hey, I just wanted to come and say hi and support you. But I do have to go because I got to film Hush. So I, I'm in and out. So she got so basically, Wendy did give her a care package. Like, here you go. I got you. So she got her supplies and she was able to the skedaddle on out of there. And then Mia and Gordon appear next. Um, and then Ashley appeared next being annoying and the reason why i say this is she's there by herself but she tries to avoid chris as if like chris did something to her girl bye and um then karen and matt um her assistant well i don't think matt is no longer her assistant i think it's th that's just her friend her friend now karen's friend but anyway they appear next but karen doesn't waste any time she immediately goes to Mia to address what happened between the exchanges of the group chat. And Mia's like, I, I don't, I'm not going to be second string to anybody. And Karen's like, well, you weren't first or second string. You were backup. I was like, what? <laughs> and so, bam, they're getting into it. And, um, Mia was like, well, you're just going to maybe go ahead and go find some new tricks because I ain't the one. She's like, no, 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 you are. And then Karen was like, no, 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 you are the trick. So that is the gist of what the how the argument went, which was crazy and nowhere. But while this argument is while this arguing is happening and how while they're getting elevated, the NECA appears and she does thank Wendy for the invite. Um, and then after that, then Kiana arrived which is wendy's friend friend of the show and then wendy addresses the rudeness of giselle because giselle's there she does show up along with robin and neither neither of them greet wendy is her event that she's hosting which was rude I, I and i ain't gonna lie that was strike number two for me in this episode was like how you gotta show up at someone's event and you don't you just show up it doesn't, I think she, I know Giselle thinks she's doing something when she does that. And like, she's like, oh, I showed her. No, you look rude. You look ratchet. It's not giving what you think is giving. I hate to break it to you, but it isn't. It's not, honey. Anyway. And then while Giselle's there, she sees that Chris is there. And then she goes and starts talking about his weight. It's like, ooh, that weight, he gained some weight. Must be it must be stress related. <laughs> you literally accuse this man of sexual assault. Or made it where you or pretty much up implied it. And had his family, his friends, businesses, all them question. 
and affect his livelihood, and you think that's funny. Giselle, respectfully, go to hell. Just, just go to hell. Anyway, she, and then she just, and then, um, while all this is happening, I, I'm sorry, just, just, she's just so, she's such a hater. <laughs> she's such a hater. But the ladies are disappointed to find out that they're going to be rolling up spices instead of weed. And everyone has like a little side comments they say in their confessional because they're like irritated by it. Which I don't blame them. I, I mean, I'm sure they thought they were about to like have them a good old time. And that's, that's not what's happening. Anyway. And then Giselle's rude again. And um, because Wendy does thank everyone for coming to the event and said, hey, everyone's laughing, having a good time for once. It's great to see this. And then Giselle's like, I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh at all. I mean, giving five years old. She's acting like a five-year-old. And then, of course, producers warm, roll back the beaming footages. And sure enough, she's laughing, having a good old time. But she's just that much of a hater. Anyway, so then after that, Robin does ask Mia about her marriage, and this is right after, like, um, G leaves. So, Gordon leaves, and so she asks about this. And she says everything's okay. Marriages go through ups and downs, and, you know, how things are going with the business is definitely impacting how things are going with them. S still sprinkling the breadcrumbs. <laughs> and while all this is happening, Nanaka asks to speak to Wendy alone. And Wendy obliges, they go to the side, and they do decide to talk. And then here, Nineka's just like, hey, I want to personally thank you for inviting me to this event. You didn't have to do that. I'm glad that you did that. So she was being the better person here. You know, even though she still does owe Wendy an apology. She definitely does still owe Dr. Wendy an apology. Um, and... She was like, hey, I would like for us to have a conversation, a one-on-one -on -one conversation at some point um, so we can address the issues. And Wendy is still giving this push. And Wendy here, this is where I got to get you together. She came to you and asked to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And Wendy's like, why all of a sudden you want to do this now? It's like... She literally did what you asked of her. <laughs> you said in the last episode when you, were t when you two were talking that things were happening in the wrong order. She's trying to correct it. To me, I didn't see that was being disingenuous. It seemed like this time she actually really was trying. I am going to shoot her some bell. I don't think there is any other reason for her to just do that. She should have did it much earlier. Sure. Yes, we agree there. But she's doing it now. And I think Wendy's order of what she wants is an apology and then the one-on-one -on -one conversation. But does it matter if the apology happens during the one-on-one -on -one conversation? To me, the one-on-one -on -one conversation is the better step because so much time has happened in between this. And at this point, to me, I ain't going to hold you, Wendy. It seems like now you're dragging it. Nanaka's trying to move on because she saw this because this is giving mixed signals. She saw that you inviting her was an olive branch. So to her, it reads like, okay, let me ask you, let's take a step further. Let's have the one-on-one -on -one conversation. The olive branch doesn't equal to her necessarily just straight up apologizing, even though she should. She should. But if she doesn't think she's wrong and her truth is her truth, and you think your truth's your truth, a conversation probably needs to be had before there's any form of an apology. So, what are you doing, Wendy? I, I won't be on your side on this, but girl, girl, you be, you be kind of contradicting yourself here and there, and I'm not understanding that. And, yeah, so anyway, she does realize that there is some pushback in the neck of it. She's like, okay, I'm going to take it for what it is. I am going to invite her to my event still, and it's fine. And Wendy says she receives it, but she's just, she's given a stink attitude a little bit about it. 
similar ad is like the stankness reversed because before I was in the neck with the stank attitude and now it's Wendy who has a stank attitude and it's your fearless leader Giselle that pushed that set this tone for that for for you guys to hold on to garages and stuff which is why I think she needs to leave this show you, you, you see how I found a way to just uh, still to Giselle because she really should leave this show but anyway that's pretty much it for this seeing here so next mia and gordon meet up for lunch um and we find out because they don't have a nanny anymore they have to do day dates Mia's not happy about it is what it is and they are still going to a couple's therapy uh, or, or marriage counseling and talking about the relationship that's what they're doing pretty much at this lunch because this is part of what they they were advised to do through their therapist to start going on more dates probably i'm assuming and child wendy going to a mess <laughs> and the way w it yeah mia and mia and gordon are a mess i might have said wendy mia and wendy are i mean sorry mia and gordon they're just a mess mia is <laughs> i didn't know that i was gonna like mia but child mia is like the fun delusional that delusion that you want in a housewife i ain't gonna lie She's that chaos, but fun chaos. She actually is a Ashley Darby with way more personality and way more of an interesting story. And she also have a little bit of a line problem. Or, no, a weird relationship with the truth. She has a weird relationship with the truth. That's, that's what we've been trying to say. That's what Mia is. Mia has this weird relationship with the truth. But, um... <laughs> And but in this, they somehow so they're talking about the relationship, talking about how the business business had taken so much tolls and stuff, and you know, getting the divorce attorney. We find out that Gordon, the way Gordon found out that he was that she was seeing an attorney was when he got the bill. Yikes. Um, and then somehow they got to the subject of Ashley and what she got going on with Michael. Gordon doesn't believe they're get, that she's going to ever divorce that man. I don't either. And um, Mia's like, really? You don't think so? Because Gordon in this situation is kind of or was the Michael of the situation. And Mia is actually the situation. So that's I feel that's why I kind of got brought up. But child, why did all of a sudden they start talking about their arrangement on TV? <laughs> The way they worded it, I knew they are literally talking about their actual arrangement. Not Ashley. They may seem like um, this would be, they think that this would be Ashley and Michael's arrangement. You ain't fool me with that. Gordon was literally talking about the arrangement that he thinks he would be having with Mia. But Mia's like, I didn't agree to that. <laughs> and the arrangement was, if things are going left, we would still stay married on paper and we'll come up with an agreement for a payout. And that way we manage the kids and everything else, but the divorce wouldn't actually happen. That's what Gordon thinks that, that this is going to be. Because to me, you ain't fooling me. This, is, this has been the arrangement the whole entire time. I know this is the arrangement the whole time. Let me know if y'all caught that. Because the way they were talking, I was like, child, you literally were just telling me what y'all arrangement actually is like right now. <laughs> but Mia just isn't sticking to the script. Mia's like, no, nah, if I'm done, I'm going to fight someone with some more money and leave you and go over there. That's because <laughs> Mia couldn't even hide it in her face. And she's like, I'm not agreeing to that. mess but I, I ain't gonna lie i kind of laughed at this thing a little bit first i was bored but then when they started talking about that i was like oh child they are a mess anyway <laughs> all right so the unpacking party is happening soon the neck is talking um about moving forward with um wendy with her sister so her sister's there and then giselle arrives first and we also find out that they will be drinking the NECA's um, sparkling wine samples to 
she wants to, you know, figure out how the ladies like it before they move on to, before she moves on to like distributing it. Cause she's really close to distributing the product. And, um, Mia arrives next, then Sharice, then Karen, then Robin, then Kiana, and then Ashley shows up at the same time. We find out here because I think it was Giselle or someone asked Kiana if Wendy is showing up and Wendy's not coming. And Giselle has the unmitigated gall of making this a thing like, how, how come she's not going to show up and not tell the house this, that? This same lady who was rude as F at the last event and the same lady who won't show up to anybody by else's individual thing unless everybody's there. Girl, no. Girl, bye. It's a case of shut up. It's shut up, Giselle. But anyway, then Candace shows up. But we find out, um, <clears throat> I think everyone's there. Yeah, yeah, everyone's there. We find out that the unpacking party, what they're going to be unboxing is her wedding gifts. This would be a cute idea if she got married that, you know, within a couple months and they moved into the place. She's been married for two years. Also, she doesn't know these women. Like, she just met these women. Like... I wouldn't be doing like an unboxing like this with people who I literally don't really know, just in general, not even with it being wedding gifts or anything. Why are you basically letting strangers touch your stuff? I don't know. So yeah, it's weird all across the board. Just saying. So her marriage gifts have just been in a box for two years. Yeah, it's weird. Nineka, you're kind of weird. I ain't gonna lie. I'm wondering why you're wanting them to do that. Are you just trying to show off like what all you got? I don't know. I was confused by it. But anyway, me and Karen get into it again. <laughs> and Mia activates Karen. Karen officially gets activated and she's like, Mia, I've been trying to give you chances. I'm the one who introduced you to this group. And then you betray my trust last year and start spreading these rumors about me that you only heard one time and just start spreading these rumors about me. If it wasn't for me, though, you wouldn't even be in this group. And me rebuts. It's like, if you hear more than once is, I mean, I feel like that's worth a discussion. I heard it talk being spoken about more than once. And Karen states, well, you know what? I don't talk about all the things I've heard about you. And she's like, what do you mean? I was like, the fact that you met with a rapper. And you're having sex with a married man. And everyone's just like, wait, what? <laughs> and Mia's just like. Because <laughs> child, Mia's a mess. Mia's a mess. <laughs> because then Mia. <laughs> and her confessional, she's like. First of all, he is not a rapper. Ah. <laughs> uh, the breadcrumbs. Because for those who may be, for those who may not know, and I normally don't do this, I normally don't talk about things that are outside the show, but like, me already got another man. And he's a, I guess, well known DJ, a radio DJ, promoter type dude. So he does give off rapper vibes, but he's not a rapper. <laughs> but that is her man currently. And yeah, so it's funny. Um, <laughs> and so she clarifies with the ladies, though. And she's like, I didn't sleep with a married man. But she never said she wasn't sleeping with the, the guy who's <laughs> So at least, at least in this case, Mia's not lying. She just has an interesting relationship with the truth still. <laughs> she's deflecting just a little bit. <laughs> but child the way she's telling herself it is funny it's so Mia <laughs> I didn't realize how much I was gonna like Mia but Mia's, Mia's a mess and I love it I love me a messy housewife but like a fun messy she's not harming other she's harmless towards the other ladies <laughs> so so it's funny to me but anyway they all end up getting their fittings sitting down they start playing never have I ever 
And um, Giselle starts at first and she's like, never have I ever paid, thought of paying for the D. And Ashley out of nowhere <laughs> makes Sharice catch a stray. She's like, Sharice, have you thought? Sharice's like, wait a wait, now wait a minute. Well, how did I get? She was like, how did I get it? What the, what the heck? And then, her, and then in Ashley's special, she's like, well, if anyone was to do it, I would think it would be Sharice because she has the coins and she's of, of older age. And sometimes you just want to get what you want. And that's that on that. So I thought if anyone would do it, it would be her. No shame. If I would, if I could do it, I would too. I was like, so then the next one, the next, um, never have I ever. Robin clearly put this here because she wanted a moment. Never have I ever had a picture, a friend's family's picture in my phone. I.e. Karen having Robin's family in her phone. And, and Karen's like, yeah, I, I do. I did have, I probably did have in your, in my phone. And they're like, and they're all the ladies are going to like, what? And then they ask, like, do you have like a Robin folder? She's like, I do actually. <laughs> what? And let's be real. If this was normal friend group, yes, that would be weird. But this is the housewives. You know they're all talking about each other and all trying to be ready just in case someone comes for them. So yeah, they're probably going to have the folder and have the things together just in case they need to get them together. Especially with all the things that are said during the season and then about the time the reunion comes, you need to be able you need to have your notes. So that's probably really why Karen has a folder. Quite as caption probably is a folder for every single one of the ladies. It's not giving obsession though, like you think, um, Robin. So let that go. Let that delusion go. She's not obsessed with you. She just knows that you're always coming for her, so she wants to be ready for it. That's how I received it. Let me know if y'all feel that way or at all or not. But anyway, they do end with a toast of her wine. And Karen leads it. And that pretty much ends the episode. It was a light fun episode. We do find out in the next episode though. That they are going to be going to the DR. So the Dominican Republic for their next cast trip. It's an improvement guys. But I need them to be in a different hemisphere. Because the Dominican Republic is still too close to the United States for me. That's almost like Mexico. It's going to be different for them because I don't think I've ever seen them go to the DR. But, or any other housewives go to the DR. But, I just want the budget to budget a little bit more. Can any of them go to like an Asian country? That would be dope. Other than, ultima other than through Ultimate Girls Trip. Or can any of them go to like a European country, something different? Like, or even Canada. But like, not so, not Windsor though. <laughs> and this would be the franchise will take them to Windsor, Canada and think it's cute. Like, just like they took them to Austin. Anyway, 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 anyway. I'm digressing. That does conclude the um, recap. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.